Hello, uh, and welcome to the uh, Tetrisphere Hard Level Showcase. This is designed to show off some of the hardest levels in the game that could be added to any Tetrisphere run as an incentive. So you wouldn't want to do a incentive level that was part of a run that was already showcased, but they can be. You can pick and choose depending on exactly what you want to show off. So first, we're going to show off Rescue 1010 to the hardest level in Rescue mode. Um, we're going to see four shapes on the ball. The ball is going to be six layers deep, and it is going to start with... It's going to have an incredibly fast timer that is going to put us under threat almost from the get-go, and even at speedrunner speeds, we are still going to be threatened by the clock. So we're going to have to work around that. And then the other thing is we have to dig out the biggest possible area for this mode, which is a 4x4 four four area that we have to cover. Did earn a dynamite pretty quickly, so we're going to take advantage of that. This is green. We're going to grab that power up while I see it. I actually want to dig a little wider here if I can find a good way to do it. You can see, despite me basically making non-stop breaks, we are already being threatened with yellow time and pretty close to red time on top of that. The clock is going to tick down any time we are not actively making a combo. All right. I like to save power-ups for emergency situations, but if I'm able to get it up to the level 2 power-up, which has an area effect, we will use it. Now the timer itself will not kill us. The timer will force us into drops. If those drops are valid, then we do not get punished for it. But it also does not alleviate the time pressure in any way. The only way to do that is to clear out the glowing pieces called power pieces or to make a mist drop which will reset the timer. There may be a point, depending on how this goes, where I decide to take an intentional mist drop. Missed it. That was not intentional. In particular because we had this power up down here and we were that close to getting another dynamite but I just could not get the piece to move the way I needed it to move um, at the speed I needed it to move. You can, you can see how temporary of a reprieve the power-up, the, the uh, force drop bought us. It wasn't much. So I'm trying to figure out what's holding us in, and I think it is just this square. There we go. Second potential incentive is Hide and Seek 464, which in my opinion is the hardest Crystal Tower le level in the game. So the conceit of the Crystal Tower is if you look around the level, you see all these blocks, these little gray blocks. These, those are crystal blocks. You can drag a block through them and they will break. You can also break a combo next to them and they will break. They're just used to fill out the ball. We have this tower in the center here, and that tower is made of crystal pieces. Um, so if we break a combo next to the tower, it will break. Our goal is to uncover the tower and uncover the base of the tower to the 5x5 five five area without breaking the tower and toppling it. If we break the tower, we lose the level. We do not receive a strike. We just lose the level. Have to start completely from scratch. So, we have to be very careful in what we do here. Strike's unfortunate, but it's okay. Um, on top of that, we have very difficult shapes to work with. If you notice we have the rectangle, we have the square, but the other shapes are non rectangular. We have a Z and we have an L. The rectangles will only break if they have a full side touching, but the non-rectangles basically only have to have a tiny little bit touching. 
Uh, they only have to have one little corner touching for in order to activate and to break. This substantially increases the risk of misjudging a combo and having it run into the tower accidentally. Along with that, the typical speedrun strategy for dealing with the crystal tower is to farm power-ups by tricking the game into thinking that we are doing both a gravity and a fuse combo at the same time. This requires that we take blocks and that we wiggle them a single space at a time. We are not able to wiggle a block one space and wiggle it back when all the blocks are this big. These blocks are not amenable to the trick, so we cannot effectively farm power-ups, which normally is the way we mitigate the uh, trouble of the tower. So, that you've seen me use a power-up and throw a power-up directly at the tower, and you've seen that not affect the tower. So we can throw power-ups at the tower all day if we can acquire them. So that is typically our goal in these stages, is to just farm power-ups and acquire as many as possible. This stage does an end around on that and does not allow us to do our preferred strategy, so we have to go about this the hard careful, diligent way. Alright, so we're making some progress. We got probably about half the tower dug out. Shit, these are separate. One thing we do have in our advantage is that the top blocks will only break if they are at least partially exposed vertically. So we don't have to worry about chains running through the entire inside, or like the underside of the sphere where we can't see anything. To a point, it is possible for combos to run downward in a way that they do get away from us. So you can see that I am being very cautious about how close I allow any of my combos to get to the ball. Let's throw this rocket down. I was hoping that that would be timed well enough to earn a second. Unfortunately, we did not. Which is actually rather unfortunate. Right. Trying to be very careful about everything going on over here. Once again, it just takes one wrong move to rip the entire stage. So I will say this one is not the most marathon safe incentive. So it's one you will want to carefully consider. It's exciting, it's tense. But I cannot guarantee first try success on this incentive. There's just too much that can go wrong. Second strike, because I'm just trying to get rid of pieces I don't need. We are, in fact, close, but I do have to be a little more careful now due to some misdrops a little bit earlier. I'm, not, I'm also exceedingly not happy with the pieces that I'm being offered at the moment. Still just want to make sure that I get this cleared and don't... Don't take another strike, and don't topple the tower, because we've put six minutes into this already. We would prefer not to have to start this over. So I'm just going to down here. It should be okay. Grab this out here. We can kind of... So we are not quite ready to... We are not quite in go mode in that perspective yet. Make sure that we can, we can get this out of here. And there we go. So, that that six minutes, that's pretty typical. Because <laughs> I kind of rambled on that beginning anyway. Alright, so. The third stage I want to show you is the very last stage of hide and seek. 
which has a trick up its own sleeve. This level's conceit is that it is filled to the brim, to the point where there are no places to drop pieces at the beginning. You have to slide pieces around just to make the opening for your first drop. There is no other stage in the game that acts like this. Even practice mode won't let you do this. So it is actually very difficult to even get started in this. Got pieces I didn't want and tried to find a way to mill them out and I just did not succeed. I need to remember to mention the flashing warning at the beginning of this, so this is my reminder to myself when putting the video together, that the beginning of this video, or that before we enter this, we should put on screen flashing warning, and that applies if you decide to accept this on the marathon. I would recommend that this stage receive a flashing warning, just because of the of the amount of red that is at the top of the stage. And that's true if we do it in a run as well, but if we do this in a run, it's a three hour run. So that's less likely to be submitted to too many marathons. So we need to dig out a four by four area. So I'm trying to figure out what that four by four area is gonna look like right now. Includes chipping away a bunch of blocks there that I think actually so a bunch of crystal blocks that are just kind of hanging out in the way. Alright, so I need to get rid of this square because what I am looking for here is an opportunity to clean up some yellows. I think what we need is a just we might just need one green down in this corner here. I'm not a hundred percent sure. That was very clean, actually. Didn't waste a lot of work at all. All right. So the fourth run I want to show you, and the last hard level, is something that I've taken to calling the Century. We go into practice mode, and we use not one, not two, not three, not not four, but we use all six shapes. Uh, we do the max number of layers it will allow, which is 99, and we we ask, we uh, say we're going to dig out 99 cores, which means we have to dig out 99 2 by 2 squares on the ball. Um, so this is a completely different kind of challenge, something I've just recently taken up. I don't know that I have it optimized yet, uh, but uh, I'm going to see how well we can do on this for the submission here. This is going to, this is again completely different. It involves a lot of a lot of hunting and pecking, excuse me. It's actually really difficult to get started because the ball is so clogged with uh, lots of stuff. And I have found that the strategy here seems to be to mill power-ups out of the gate. Which does require that we dig out enough to leave ourselves enough room to actually do such a thing. Just a little bit, which can be a little bit tricky. At the beginning, we just don't have a lot of room with which to even do that. So we're looking around here, would like to receive some glowing pieces, and we're going to use this trick here. We pull the piece, we slide it back and forth, and that lets us convince the game that we have done. It lets us convince the game that we are doing both a gravity combo and a fuse combo at the same time, which increases our multiplier incredibly fast. So can we, how do we set this up? We go like that. And we're going to try as best as we can to get set to get our power up up to an atom as quickly as we can because that will strip off the entire outer layer of the ball. We can 
many situations, I do not think it is a good power-up, given how much we need to do just to get through this mode. It's contextually extremely good. So we're looking for... If we can make one more break with the green, we can probably be in position to do what we need to do. But just finding enough room with which to do it is tricky. One thing in this mode is we do not have any sort of timer trouble. I don't have, I just do not have the ability to, I don't have any more greens, I kind of need yellow, or I need that fire block down there for this. So let's use the atom. Unfortunately, we're going to lose that one fire block. Fire blocks never appear on the surface of the ball. They always appear at least one level down, but by digging, or by using the atom, we can actually expose a whole bunch of them, because they were all one layer down. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to grab this, and then I'm trying to find more places. I'm trying to first see, can I actually find any more fire blocks, and second, can I mill power-ups? Let balls five layers deep, every layer we remove will speed up the game noticeably. So now it's only three layers deep. Kind of feel like, here's the point where I don't actually know yet if the better strategy is to peel one more layer off, or if we should just start digging now. So I think I want to peel one more layer off, so I'm going to go looking for more situations here where I can take advantage of that. So I'm going to set up these things where we can continue to just stick the piece in like that. Over, and then we go do the wiggle. I'm going to pull this through here so that we can set up another wiggle. Um, if I had another green over here, I could actually do pretty well with this. I do not, so let's just drop some combos. Send over another yellow, and we could actually... Can we... We can bring this down all the way to the bottom. Put this one here. Alright, so now we got that up one more level. One more... One more level of power up, and I think that we will be good to start progressing here. Okay, we can make a power piece over here. One more wiggle should get us what we need. I just need to find a place where it's set up, and I need to find a... I need a power piece green. There we go. Now, look at, look at that number of cores just plummeting. We just went from 99 to 48 in one power up because we were close to the bottom. So now a lot of what we gotta do is just kind of clean up. So, I do need to find somewhere where I can get rid of this L because it's not what I need. And there's another one which is, you won't believe this, but it's still not what I need. We can go over here, we can grab that, grab a power up here, and then we'll fire that. And with another rocket, we'll find another area where we can. And we're done. Okay. 
So those are four options you have for incentives that you could add to a Tetrisphere run. Every Each one of them has its own interesting gimmick to it. Um, and yeah, none of them are easy. All of them will take substantially longer than the other levels in the game. Uh, I would say that the Crystal Tower is probably the least marathon safe, but also the most exciting, the most tense. Especially if I take a moment and demonstrate the collapse of the tower at the beginning and how it starts you over. Okay. 